we are nothing more than a sophisticated row of dominoes falling, then we never choose anything. And if we never choose anything, then there is no place for guilt, punishment, praise, blame, or anything like that. Uh, B.F. Skinner, he wrote uh, the book Beyond Freedom and Dignity and held this crazy idea that we are those sophisticated dominoes that I just mentioned. But no physical system is an agent and therefore no physical system has moral responsibility. But human beings do have moral responsibility and therefore human persons are not physical systems but rather souls. To shift gears here a bit, an interesting topic that I recently looked at is that of near-death experiences, which happens to provide a, a couple different proofs in this discussion. Um, if we are just our bodies, which is the physicalist view, then all of our, our uh, perceptions are just the result of physical activities in our bodies. And if this is true, it would be impossible for anyone to have direct perception of things that their bodily system has no access to. But people do have these experiences, and therefore we are not our bodies. Uh, that's the conclusion drawn from this, if it's true. One example would be remote viewing. And this is an, I have one example where a lady describes in great detail a shoe on the roof of a hospital in which she was at that she had no possibility of seeing. And these things happen all the time, but the ones that I'm very briefly talking about are the ones that are the most well-documented cases. I mean, obviously there's fringe examples and a bunch of false uh, ones, and I'm skeptical in that regard, but these are the most well-documented ones and seem to be uh, fairly legitimate. <clears throat> um, another example uh, of one uh, uh, where a person seeing things that their physical uh, body doesn't have access to is is one where a little boy named Rick who stays behind and watches his family and their reactions as his body is carried away in the ambulance with incredible accuracy. Um, the boy was comatose before the ambulance arrived and he stayed that way for a week. His soul also went to the hospital before the ambulance got there and saw that a 12 year old girl was being moved out of the room to another room because they were trying to prepare the room for his arrival. Also, people who are physically blind actually saw the colors and jewelry worn by individuals around them to astonishing accuracy. They were even tested to make sure that they were still blind afterwards. So apparently their souls could see, but while trapped in the defective body, could not. There have also been times and cases where people saw other dead people in their near-death experiences that were waiting for them when they had no knowledge of the person just uh, the person just recently dying. Sometimes within minutes of the other person dying, they they got no news of the fact. Yet they saw them and spoke with them, and then were themselves revived and you know to find out the news that a relative or a friend just died, but they already knew because they spoke with them. Now these instances have been thoroughly researched and peer-reviewed even and can be found in the scientific literature on uh, near-death experiences. These sort of things could not happen even by principle if there were no soul. Now of course, as a skeptic myself, I realize there are many false reports of similar types of things like I just said, but there are also many true reports I would uh, wager to say. I don't know for sure, but it's just one thing to think about. Um, this is the whole thing I've been talking about here. I just lay down five different evidences. Evidence from the nature of first-person self-awareness, uh, private nature of our mental states, personal identity through time, freedom and moral responsibility, and near-death experiences. And any, any one of these, even, would provide a nice case for the soul. But combined, all of these, we have a powerful position to reject the notion that we are just molecules in motion. There is obviously something more going on, and the soul has explanatory power. It explains and makes sense of a number of things. I think with this I am basically trying to convince you of something I believe you already know to be true. And this resonates with you in, in a sort of, quote, common sense sort of way because all of these things being discussed you have personal access to. And we wouldn't even have the possibility of experiencing these things or having the capacity of feeling guilt or any other such things unless the soul were real. And this, these things going on aren't something that happens in your pancreas or your stomach or your C-fibers 
but the soul. Okay. Lastly, I want to cover a few questions and applications taken from a scriptural reference. When the Bible talks about the soul with different terms, it is merely talking about different aspects of the soul, like the heart, mind, soul, right? Soul includes emotions, will, intellect, or mind. And you could just say the word soul to reference the whole entity without breaking down particular traits of it. Soul and spirit are used synonymously. Animals do have souls. They're not just biological masses of tissue, but people ask whether dogs go to heaven. This question misunderstands the purpose for a soul. Souls have more purpose than getting us to the afterlife. With humans, the soul survives the death of the body. But with animals, their soul doesn't survive the death of their bodies. It's that simple. Um, Paul said that physical exercise profits little. But godliness is a means of great gain. For it holds a promise not only for this life, but for eternity. And the things we do in this short life with our soul will impact our states in heaven or hell for eternity. Hebrews 11 discusses individuals who were sawn in two and eaten by lions and that they were not delivered so uh, because they uh, might attain a better resurrection. Because, you know, we're not all going to be equal in the afterlife. Some people say, well, I thought my cup will be full when I get to heaven. Sure, it will be but it might be a smaller cup. <laughs> so develop your soul to have affluence in heaven, not here. The Bible says to fear not him who can kill the body and do no more, but rather fear him who can throw both body and soul into hell. God is to be feared and not man, namely because of what he can do to the soul. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of a living God. The Bible also says, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So consider this and consider that guilt that you experienced that I mentioned earlier and know that the answer to that guilt is not denial, but forgiveness. And that forgiveness is found in Christ only to all those who will bow the knee and repent of the wickedness that they have in their own life and put their entire trust in Christ alone for salvation.